Right, in this video, we're going to talk about the idea of a critical fracture. So we've seen the um, conditions for a fracture. It's written as, as K1C is equal to geometric parameter Y times uh, applied stress and the square root of pi times A. So if we rearrange this, and solve for the stress, which is the fracture stress, would be K1C over pi A. And in this example here, they just get, went and allowed lot equal to one. So this will be our plane strain um, condition where the crack is very small compared to the dimensions of the sample. So if we, if we take a look and plot this fracture stress as a function of A, and we're going to walk along this curve here. And so as A gets smaller and smaller, we're going to need a larger and larger stress to cause fracture. But we can find a stress that will result in the fracture. If we keep going with this curve, eventually the curve is going to get higher than the yield strength of the material. And that is that point at which this fracture stress value is exactly equal to the yield strength. It's where our mode of deformation is going to switch over to yielding. So in this region here, the crack tip will blunt out. And so we won't have those high stress intensities anymore. And in front of the crack tip, we'll have a uh, yielding zone. And so that's the idea of a critical uh, crack length. Okay, so rearranging our fracture toughness equation, we could solve for the critical crack length. And you can see here, it's just the fracture uh, toughness, plane strain mode one fracture toughness squared over pi times the yield strength squared. And that gives us this point here. All right, so that's our critical value. So again, uh, crack smaller than that will just result in yielding of the material and so the, the material will uh, can be used in design and it will fail in a, in a different predictable way. It'll yield and go ductile. But once we get cracks larger than that value, then we have uh, real failure, a fast fracture. So let's take a look at that value a little bit more. So what, you know, what size do we use as a, a standard crack size in a material? Because in the design, we're going to assume that there is a crack in the material or a flaw of some size. So what size makes sense? Well, it depends on the technique that you use uh, to monitor the sample. So for example, if we were to use uh, visual inspection in, in the laboratory, or in the field that says here we've got a defect size needs to be greater than 0.1 millimeters in order to be able to observe it. And so we could assume then that the crack size that's already in the material is just 0.1 millimeters, for example. And then we could go ahead and calculate the stress that the sample can maintain before we get failure. Now we have to use this, we might want to put some, uh, well, we definitely want to put some uh, safety factors in here. And, you know, we have to be careful to not use this chart too literal because even though this is maybe our sensitivity, this doesn't mean that if the, that if we have a crack that's slightly bigger than that, maybe it's 0.3 millimeters or even a millimeter or occasionally much bigger, it doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily see it. That's going to depend upon whether that surface is painted and the crack is hidden, um, whether it's dirty, whether the light um, wasn't good enough so it was missed for some other reason. So we have to be a little bit careful with that. One way that, that you can try and avoid some of that with at least the visual inspection is use a dipenetrant test. You can see here we get much better sensitivities. And I've included a video in our uh, the video series there in Canvas for the dipenetrant test. So you can take a look at that. It's actually pretty interesting. All right. So again, we're talking about this uh, critical 
crack size for a material, right? And again, if our, if our crack in the material A is less than this critical size, then we have uh, ductility and it'll behave in a ductile way. And if it's greater than this critical size, then we have fracture. Okay, so on this chart, what we're plotting here is the fracture toughness by the yield strength. Remember this, this critical size was given by the toughness squared over the yield strength squared times pi. I believe I've got that right. Yeah. All right. And so I have a plot here of K1C versus sigma Y. And that means I could put lines on this plot. Okay, plot a line on here where each point on this line corresponds to a critical crack size of a thousand millimeters. Okay, so all we've done was plug in for this one point, the K1C value, the sigma Y value here, and put it into our equation and we've calculated the critical crack size. And so this is kind of a nice way to, to look at things. You can see that there, there are actually materials, looks like the copper alloys, that are crossing uh, into this 1,000 millimeters, in other words, a meter. So that's going to be a very ductile material that can withstand a meter crack size before it goes brittle. Okay, so that's going to stay a ductile material. Um, but you can see the other values on here. We've got um, you know, 100 millimeters through here. We've got uh, 10 millimeters through here. So you can see that the, that the metals here seem to be spanning anywhere from uh, you know, maybe one to a thousand millimeters. Um, you can see ceramics, right, are down here at these 0.01 to 0.1 millimeter type crack sizes. Um, and so you can look up all the materials that you need on this, this type of a chart. Yeah. And then the final take home message for, for this um, short video is that as the fracture toughness, uh, let's say the yield strength goes up, Here's my, sorry, here's my yield strength increasing. My fracture toughness goes down. Okay, we've seen this over and over. And so let me remind you, yield strength goes up, tensile strength goes up, or sigma ultimate is the way that we also designate that. Um, what else? Hardness goes up. And we said, that the trade-off is that ductility drops, and now we're seeing that fracture toughness drops. All right, so again, there's always, always a trade-off with increasing the, the strengths and hardness of a material. All right, so next time we're gonna get into um, fatigue, and then we'll get into creep failure uh, to finish up chapter eight.